Hi colleagues, it's another beautiful day for making asphalt, but it's also a great day for talking about rail depot safety. And today we're going to show you the hazards and problems associated with discharging hopper wagons. Before we start any operation involved in the rail depot, we need to assess the basic risks that are going to be undertaken today. The method could be using a risk assessment, a method safe, reviewing safe systems of work, undertaking a permit to work systems. Contact your manager to find out what method you're going to use for this particular operation. Um, trying to disengage the primary lock. The wagon system, all the doors must be completely locked up and the secondaries must be in place. And once you've done that, you can discharge all the air from the wagon by using the sliding dog or the push down, depending on what wagon number that is. So before the attempt is made for the prime lock to be unseated, all the air must be discharged from the wagon as shown. For any maintenance task on a wagon, we need to ensure that the air is isolated. Hopper wagons come in many guises and you need to make sure that you know which device is applicable for the isolation of the air. In this example, the red valve, the slider valve, is the one that we will pull and push in order to isolate the air. Please check which device and what method you need to use for isolating air on your hopper wagon. So once the wagon has been isolated by the push down or the sliding dog, a check can be made with the wagon key to see if there is any air in the system by placing the key in the door panel, turning it clockwise or anti-clockwise, and as you can see, no air in this system. We're now going to check the isolation of the air for the doors. We've already slid the valve back and heard the air pressure is released. We're now going to ask Stuart to insert his key and check with the levers that no doors will open, therefore proving that there is no air pressure in the system. Stuart, if you will please. So it's inserting his key that will allow control. We're now going to operate the levers. There's no air pressure that I can hear, there's no noise coming out the doors, and I can see and hear no door operation, which now proves that all the air has been removed from the system. To continue with this procedure once the wagon has uh, discharged all the air, the pinch bar can be used on the correct primary lock to uh, disengage the primary lock as there is no air in the system as shown. A great slight push down on the lever to actually disengage the primary lock. see the primary lock has been disengaged. At this point in the video we're going to use a bar to remove the primary lock on the door. The one that you'll see in the video is a fairly short bar. What we would advise is you use a bar that's at least two meters long. It removes you from the point of danger and also gives you better leverage from a safer position to remove the primary lock. As shown, we can now try and open the door in the normal procedure by de-isolating the wagon, uh, filling the wagon with air and using our key to try and open the door. Isolated, so we'll fill up with air so we can start the normal procedure for opening the door. So once the door has been uh, de-isolated again for the air to uh, be filled up to the wagon, we can then try to see if the wagon uh, door will open uh, by using his key in the panel. As you can see, the secondary lock on this particular door hasn't come off and that's due to the fact that there's too much weight now actually on the wagon itself. But if you look at the other secondary lock on the other side of the wagon, that actually has come off. And that's because that wagon, uh, has, the two doors have been uh, discharged and there's no weight on there. So before we put the uh, plugging spanner back on, onto the door itself we need to shut the system down again uh, 
by closing the, the closing the secondary lock. And remove your key. Locks have been put back into the closed position, and the key has been removed. The operator can now uh, attach his plug-in spanner as shown. The reason for the chain or wire on the flogging spanner is so that if for any reason that it does happen to slip off, it doesn't go down the hopper house. So once the flogging spanner has been attached, as shown... The In the video, you'll have seen Kevin inserting a wire around the flogging spanner around this point. What we would advise you to do is to feed the wire behind the arrow so as to come out of the nip zone. This nip zone will be where the ram could activate and catch your fingers. So always feed it behind and come from a position of safety so you're no longer in the line of fire. Attacks. The operator now has to open the door panel on the secondary locks. The reason for opening the door as shown is to help the air system once the operator started to um, tap the flogging span around the air will actually take over and uh, then put it into the open position which will be shown now. The operator can start uh, tapping the flogging spanner to allow this secondary lock to come over and as we can see the air system has now taken over. Flogging spanner, sorry, so once the secondary lock has come over, the operator can take his flogging spanner off. 